Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome to a small Fortress CAD update. I've been working on the Rook a little bit this week, um, getting ready to print all the parts out of it, out for it so I can do some build videos on the, the Rook now that I have the Fabrico kit, so um, look out for those. But I have made a small amount of progress on Fortress here, I am work waiting on a couple parts. Um, and I wanted to just kind of show off the, the progress that I've made. So you can see here basically, um, as we've seen before, I, I basically have my mount here. Um, you can see the belt that's already ran now and I'll show you that in just a moment. So we have our one piece foot that supports the lead screw. I've mirrored that over. These are final parts now. They're fitting great. I've printed them out. They're very strong, no wobble or anything like that. So very, very happy. Um, something I didn't show off before is I am trying to constrain the linear rails at least on the 2020 in one place. Um, I want this to be as rigid as possible. I just, the, the rail length doesn't match up with the size here. It won't actually match up with the hole. So I'm going to just have one bolt bolting directly into the 2020 on the bottom. And then I'm going to actually have a part up here that's going to index. So this will have the correct distance from the front and that way your linear rail will be nice and parallel. So that's actually going to be much easier for people when they build a printer, they don't have to measure the distance or anything like that. So, um, and then what I've been focusing on primarily is this rear section here. So I have made the electronics compartment just a little bit smaller. I did need to move these components back to give room and I needed room for the stepper motor. This is pretty much the only place the stepper motor can can live. Um, I've tried a few different orientations and to just make it work with the pulleys and stuff on the bottom, um, this seems to be the best spot. I'm of course gonna have to make new bottom panels here and have some kind of a giant cutout. Uh, this part that holds this motor and idler and stuff like that is gonna be quite large. So I'm gonna have to modify these bottom panels. But essentially, again, what I'm trying to do here is this linear rail, at least either the top or the bottom, will bolt directly into one of these 2020s, either the top or the bottom 2020. And then I'll have this mount to the actual panel. There will still be a 2020 backing the panel. So it's not like this; these uh, 3D printed parts here are gonna be holding the rail up and preventing it from moving back and forth. Um, the 2020 extrusions in the rear here will be responsible. So the rear of the Z is gonna be very rigid and it'll be totally fine even if just one part of it's bolted to the 2020. They are braced by these um, 2020 extrusions that run across here. So I am starting to get my placement working here, like how much distance I need from the linear rail to the actual lead screw. There's not a whole lot of room. I don't want to move this too far back. I do want to have an okay electronics enclosure in the back. Um, we're, we're pretty close to the edge of the bed here. Uh, should have enough room, but if I have to, I will move these parts back and uh, give myself some more room, but should be all right. We'll see. It's always, um, you always think you have enough room and then you print these parts out and, and that's what kind of iterating starts happening is you don't find out you don't have enough room and you got to keep iterating on that. But I think there should be enough room for the lead screw to kind of move a little bit in the hold the ham coupler that's right here and not uh, interact with the bed. I want to, like I say, I want to try to keep this compact. So that's kind of what's going on in the rear of this here. And then if I take away these bottom panels, I'll actually just remove all the panels. We can see uh, the work that I've been doing on trying to figure out my belt length. So I have actually built a very rough rear motor mount and bearing block here on the rear. So what I'm gonna be doing here hopefully is this block is gonna mount directly to a 2020. Again, I don't want this mounting to the panels or anything like that. This has to be rigid. So I am gonna to have to extend these faces out and actually brace them and make sure that this is rigid and not bouncing up and down when you're trying to print on this. This does have to be very, very strong, but I'm very happy with this so far. 
I will be adding a little um, kind of top flange piece here that will have an M3 screw so that you can actually move the motor front and back to actually tension this belt. So in the bottom here what we have basically is our 40 tooth pulleys are attached to all of the lead screws and then we have of course a 22 pulley here which is actually attached to the motor. So we're going to have a 2 to 1 drive and there's going to be a, a decent gear reduction here so that's nice. Um, the stepper motor is not going to have to work as hard. And then basically this will be a fixed idler that will be um, finished off here, braced up, and that's how we actually can get three lead screws with only one motor. Um, very, very excited to see how well this works. It should work great as far as I can tell. Um, it's very similar, of course, to the Bamboo Labs um, setup. This will keep the parts count low as far as you know, expensive motor, um, expensive main boards that have a lot of stepper drivers and stuff like that. I want this to be um, very, very accessible and a very inexpensive do-it-yourself printer but has a very, very rigid bed and has a very nice solution like this. So my first time doing this, we'll see how this piece evolves and, and that type of thing, but I've kind of estimating my belt size here and I've ordered a couple different belt lengths off AliExpress. I'm just waiting for those to come in, but everything's looking so good. It's looking to be around like a 780 millimeter belt, which is uh, readily available on AliExpress. Um, but I haven't yet confirmed that because I don't have my belts. That's kind of the only downside of doing it this way. Um, you are kind of constrained into like one size of belt and you have to be able to source that. Uh, I try to get away from very, very specific narrowed in parts like this, but there's always a trade off with any type of design. And I would rather have a single Z motor and a synchronous belt so that more people can build this printer and it's hopefully saves some cost. Um, I was actually quite surprised. These bearings here, these 608 bearings are very, very easy to get on Amazon. And like, I think I got 20 of them for like $10 or something ridiculous. They're, they're insanely cheap. Same thing with these uh, 40 tooth pulleys. They're actually very common. I was able to even find them here on in Amazon uh, in Canada, which usually I don't have great luck for, for kind of stuff like this. So very easy to get off AliExpress and things like that. And then of course we're just running normal 20 tooth components here for the rest of the Z. So um, yeah, honestly, I'm, I'm hoping the next Fortress video, the Z will be actually physical and we can actually see it moving up and down. That'd be really, really awesome. I'm getting uh, pretty excited to try this out. I have a little bit more CAD to wrap up, like I say, on the rear here and just kind of finish off some of these panels. And then we can actually hopefully see the, the Z moving up and down and hopefully all this works really nice. But very excited for how Fortress is coming along. I know there's definitely people waiting for uh, this to be released and I'm excited to get it out. I am for sure going to be focusing on Rook 180 next. Um, I plan on doing a brainstorming video coming up with the Rook 180. So I'm going to kind of outline my goals for the revision for Rook 180, what things I'm changing, get some feedback from the community, that type of thing. I definitely know there are people waiting for Rook 180 news and I've, I've put a bunch of information on Discord, but that of course gets lost really quick. So I want to make a video updating everyone on the plans for Rook 180 and, and that type of thing. So, but that's kind of all I had for this quick little mini um, CAD session here for uh, Fortress. Like I say, the Rook uh, Fabrico kit coming out and some other things have delayed this a little bit, but we're still on track to, to make some good progress and hopefully get this out uh, by next month. And then I can start working on Rook 180. Um, Again, as always, I really thank all my patrons, and we now hit 8,000 officially on YouTube. It's just incredible. Um, I'm really enjoying making these videos for all of you, and I'm planning on hopefully slowing down my design process a little bit, 
spending more time on each printer when they come out, when I release them, doing more follow-up videos and that type of thing. So hopefully everyone likes this and um, feel free to like, share, subscribe and leave a comment below. Thanks everyone.